Hello and welcome to church. It is amazing to have you with us. Whether you're tuning in from one of our locations in Balham or in Shoreditch, elsewhere in London or in the whole world, it's amazing to have you with us today. And if it is one of your first times here or if you haven't connected in yet, we'd love to invite you to get in touch and find out more about everything that's going on in the life of the church. We'd love to have a chat to you, to invite you to dinner parties. Head to our website, c3reflect.church forward slash connect. And we are in our brand new series, Vision Builders, which is all about the future of the church and the things that we believe God is calling us to do. And we'd love to invite you to find out more and get involved with that too. Also, you can head to our website, c3reflect.church forward slash vision builders to find out all about that. But we have an amazing treat this morning. We have a special message recorded by Pastor Peter Jacobs from C3 Imagine in Amsterdam, who are a very good good friends of ours, part of the C3 network with us, but it's an amazing prophetic message that is really going to impact you. We know you're going to love it. So listen closely, get your notebook out, uh, don't run out for a snack, <laughs> you're going to love it. Let's go. Hello, C3 Reflect. What a privilege for me it is to preach for you today. My name is Peter Jacobs and together with my wife, Monique Jacobs, we're leading the Amsterdam Zuidoost location of Church C3 Imagine. We're situated in Amsterdam and it is our privilege to serve under Pastor Steve and Lisby Warren. They're the senior ministers of this church and they're also the European uh, directors of the C3 movement. So they've just finished off their conference, which was amazing. Uh, I've seen your pastors there as well. And uh, they send their warm love. They are from England uh, and they love being in England, obviously. I myself in that uh, respect, in 1999, I came to Christ in an English conference called Stonely. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And from that point onward, my life in Christ started. And my grandmother, she's 20% British. So if I bring it back to myself, then I myself am actually 5% British. And I'm really proud of that. And I tell all my Dutch friends, that's where the true mannerisms are coming from. So kudos to all you English people. Hey, today I'm going to um, bring you a message, but actually I want to start off with a great encouragement and perhaps even into a sense of the prophetic. Because, um, yeah, I know your pastors for uh, a number of years, Pastor Sets and Emma, who are absolutely amazing. They, you've got a great family, guys. It's, yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, really, yeah, really enjoying seeing the pictures on Instagram and, and following you in that respect. And I've known you for quite a while now, Pastor Sets and Emma. Um, but, you know, in preparation of this meeting, or let's say uh, for this message, I, I, I have some things to share with you. And I know that, you're, you're okay with that, and they're really positive. Um, Sets, I would like to start with you. Um, with your church that you set out uh, to go, um, you will experience a new level of freedom. God has put on you and Emma uh, a sense of heaviness on your heart for the city of London, and it's to reach the lost people. You can see in yourself, you can already picture whole families coming in, entrepreneurs, creatives, uh, coming into church, God is meant for you to reach out into these people. There is a specific burden on you, Sets. I believe that that's something that you already see the people in your mind. You already see me coming into church. And that is something that is a God-given vision. And that's something that He wants you to run with. And also for you, Emma, it's something that you carry together. Sets, your creativity is resonating with others. It attracts, it appeals. It inspires. It's a, g a gift that God has given you. And God has a plan in you for you that he, want that he wants to unleash. See it as a new season, new connections, an increased burden for the lost, even a new anointing. God is developing you as a person. He, he loves you, Sets. He loves you very much and He cares for you. And He set in you a sense of vision, a sense of freedom that He wants you to run with. Because out of this creativity that he's put it within you, people will be drawn to that. People will understand that. People will feel communicated and blessed through the way and how you communicate. 
I think, you know, this, the, the word C3 Reflect is, is really amazing. I, I will share a little bit about that later. And for you, Emma, when I, when I, when I, when I, when I think about you, when I pray for you, I, I have these two words, inside and foresight. Actually an anointing, a discernment of spirits, a genuine love and care for people, a strength, a strength of character. And God is wanting to build his church on this. And a sense, a great sense of security that people are finding in you, a stability that people are looking for. Um, you, when I was praying for you, when I was praying for this message, I saw business people coming to you and they were sharing their hearts with you. They were, they were sharing their considerations in life. And there was the specific anointing, there was specific wisdom stored up within you. And you know that when these people are coming to you, that God has already showed you what to speak. Or when you're talking in conversation with them, there has been an accumulation of wisdom and a wealth of wisdom and God's, and God's grace on your world to be poured out into these people. People need that because that is Jesus that you're ministering then to them. I think that's that's amazing word for you, uh, Pastor Sets and, and, and Emma. But before I go into my message, there is this general sense that I feel that God has, through Pastor Steve, which has been pro prophesying over our church, I actually believe the same for you. And it's in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19. And let me read out verse 19 first. It says this, Behold, I'm doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make way away in the wilderness and, and rivers in the desert. And then it says in verse 18, it says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. I think if you put this in the context of seat we reflect, that it makes a lot of sense, right? Last year, 2020 was a totally different year than 2020. The name change, the structural changes, and the believing sets in Emma that this is a word for you, that the sense of freedom that you're now experiencing, uh, or let's say the, the, the plan for God for your world is, for your church is that sense of freedom. And what I believe is that that sense of the new thing will actually be your interpretation on what the church of Christ will be looking at in C3 shortage, uh, C3 Reflect shortage in Belham. You will bring a new interpretation of how to be a church, how to be a body of believers, and that will be resonating with the people. So God has stored up within you a story. God has stored up within you a narrative. God has stored something up within you, a passion, a creativity, a prophetic word that people will be drawn to. People will be coming to your church and they will say, I'm in need of God, an interpretation of God, what you're preaching, what I'm experiencing through the community is exactly what I need in this moment. So I find that really amazing, guys. I'm really excited about your church location. We are upon the way on the other side of the North Sea, but from our C3 mansions at those heart, we're with you and we really believe that God is going to do something amazing. So let me pray for you. Father, I thank you right now for the, yeah, the amazing Pastor Sets and Emma. Thank you, Jesus, that it's not just in the looks of these two people and their kids, but it's also in the calling and, and the power of Christ and the anointing that you've put on these amazing people together with their leadership team to really create something new. And Father, I thank you that you want to set out something new in, in London. You want to transform the way and how people look at church through Sats and Emma. And I thank you, Jesus, that in this moment right now, you anoint and you give a new authority to preach about and a new liberty to preach about the concepts that Sats and Emma have in their hearts. Thank you, Jesus, for this church. And thank you for these amazing people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Fantastic, fantastic. Hey, it's my privilege to, uh, to be preaching for you. And um, actually, I want to start off with, uh, the, uh, with the scripture that I just shared. It's in Isaiah chapter 43 again in verse 19. And it says, Behold, I'm doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Earlier this year, I was reading, I, I had caught up with my Bible plan, like you do up with Bible plans, right? You start them off, you catch up with them, and then you finish them off. I was very excited to finish my Bible plan off. And what I did, I was like, yeah, that was my 
one year Bible plan reading. I just, you know, I have a management accounting background. So what I do is I have 1,344 pages in the Bible. I divide it by 365 and that's what I'll be reading for the day. So I finished that off. And what I did is I started to read again the New Testament and it starts out with the gospels. And when I was reading, I came to a very specific point in time, or let's say a very specific scripture where uh, uh, John the Baptist, uh, uh, a prophet, he was being described. We, we came to the point where uh, the Bible was describing who John the Baptist is. And it was necessary for John the Baptist to come because like the scripture in Isaiah says that there was need for a highway to be made, a way, a way to be made for, for something new. And um, yeah, if we look at, look at Luke chapter 7, verse 27, it says, Behold, I sent my messenger before you, who will pre prepare your way before you. It's talking about a messenger, it's talking about, it's referring to John the Baptist. He was preparing the way for Jesus, the Messiah. It was God's plan all along to have a Messiah come, but before the Messiah would come, he deemed it necessary for John the Baptist to come, to straighten the path, to prepare the way for the king. And that's basically, uh, that's the start of my message. Because um, um, let me just read out the scripture with you. John chapter one, verse 19 and verse 23. And this is a testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, no, I'm not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, um, no. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you make about yourself? He said, I am the voice, was John Baptist's response. I'm the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, making straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. In 400 years, there has, has no been, there has no prophet uh, uh, come to send out a voice from God. In that sense, the spiritual landscape of the country of Israel, the nation of Israel, it was really dry. There was oppression by the Roman culture, uh, by, by Caesar. Uh, there were all types of things happening within the nation, but none of it was really inspired by a word from God. So when John the Baptist came on stage, he started baptizing people and the Pharisees, the religious state of, of the day, was really you know, questioning, who are you? And what authority are you doing this? Who are you? And then basically John the Baptist says, like John the Baptist is, he says, I'm actually the person who's making this straight way for the Lord. And when I was reading this, this part of scripture, in my mind, I saw the city of Jerusalem in the old age, and I saw uh, 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 on the pavement or, or, or just all across the city, I saw this huge highway being slammed on the city. It was actually quite um, an interesting thing to see is that this, this established city of, uh, of Jerusalem, a really big and influential city of Jerusalem, there was actually just this road being slammed on it or to the center, to the synagogue, to, to, to the temple. And that was basically the thing that, that, that John the Baptist was, was made to do. He was made to create a way in the religious state of mind, in the religious state of what was happening during the, back in the day, uh, in, in what was happening. And he did it quite uh, rigorously. He did it quite in a way that, um, that direct and blunt. You could almost say, perhaps it was even the Dutch way. Uh, uh, you know, the Dutch, we are well known for our directness and um, yeah, in the way and how we basically, yeah, in communication, especially if you, uh, if you work together with Dutch people, you recognize that there is a sense of directness that in British culture is basically not done. It's not appropriate. And uh, just a fun fact, the reason why that is, is that there was no kingdom in, in, in the Netherlands until, let's say, the 1800s, whilst in, in England it was already established in the 1100s. So the, the, the United Kingdom has an established culture of kingdom of over, uh, 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 
oh, well, almost a thousand years, whilst the Netherlands only has it for almost two to three hundred years. So that's why the Dutch are uh, less behaved in some, some respects. Um, it's not always quite dip diplomatic, it's not always good. But in this case, John the Baptist, he needed to do it. There was a slamming on, on the spiritual landscape of, of Jerusalem and in the nation of Israel because he was preparing the way for the King of Glory to come. So let me read out Matthew chapter 3 for 6 until 10. And they were baptized by, by John the Baptist in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who want you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance and do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up the children of Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the, to the root of the trees. Every tree therefore that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. That was the role of John the Baptist. Religion was shaken. In my mind, I saw it was shaken to the core. It was, uh, and then in my mind, I saw the following. Uh, I saw the following uh, uh, picture: is that um, when I was looking at a picture of this highway being slammed on the city of Israel, I asked God. I said to Him, I said, uh, "How does it fit in the context? This picture in the context of me personally uh, today, and in that respect, uh, perhaps even." Uh, how can I apply this in, in everyday life of, uh, to make it, con to contextualize it for, every per for everyone? So what I then saw was I saw a city in my mind, um, uh, a city like uh, London. I didn't see the shard. Uh, I, I, I didn't see the big eye. So in, 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 um, uh, 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 so in that sense, yeah, um, uh, perhaps you could say, uh, but I, I did see a big, big, big city. A city like London, a city like New York, skyscrapers. And when I was hovering over the city, uh, it, was, uh, it was obviously a modern city, um, I recognized parts of the city that was basically the landscape of my life. I saw, I saw in the city specific places, neighborhoods of the city, which, uh, which were desolate. They were abandoned. And, uh, uh, and, and, and I saw pornography that I had uh, in the past and these houses were, uh, were uh, abandoned. I had specific friends when I was a non-Christian and I had to say goodbye to them. They were abandoned. And then if I would be, uh, I, I saw uh, places uh, in, my, yeah, in, in my city where uh, have parts of the city where I had, uh, where I had, I saw my relationship with my parents. But my parents got divorced, so I saw that, you know, uh, houses were burned out. They were not there anymore. But luckily, part of the city is, has, has, has also inhabited, has also grown over the years through God's grace that my relationship with my parents ha has, has become better and better. And when I was looking through, uh, uh, through, let's say it looked a little bit like a time shift, you know, the inner part of the city was when I was growing up. And then the outer part of the city had a very uh, directional way on, on, on growing uh, uh, because the roads that were in the city, they were leading to the specific to, to the light, literally. I saw a big light and all the roads were, were, were and they were all roads joining into each other, but they were going to, to a, a specific direction. And uh, specifically, I saw, um, I saw baseball. Uh, quite recently, I, I picked up baseball again to keep my mental health uh, good. I don't necessarily have hobbies, but you know, when life gets tough, it's good to, you know, to do something that you really enjoy and that alleviates the pressure from your soul. So I saw a baseball stadium. Um, what I also saw was that during the COVID period and the lockdown, that some areas of my life regarding specific relationships that I have with friends from church or even my family or uh, 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 friends that I had outside of church, that there was less, uh, uh, there was, uh, less activity. The, the houses were sort of uh, filled with you know, laughter, but it was a lot, it was a lot less. Uh, and so I saw all these specific parts of, this, of, of the city. And um, yeah, what I said is, what I find is that God is wanting 
to bring this message of spiritual landscaping is that we become very aware on what does our landscape of our lives look like. Like John the Baptist, he was coming to create a spiritual highway for God to move in the nation of Israel when it was needed because the king was coming. Actually, it's our responsibility as well as people from God, as people who, uh, who have a calling upon our lives to, to save the lost, being the body of Christ. There is, we need to have, we need to be mindful. We need to be taken into consideration in what way we are creating the spiritual landscape in our lives. And it's important to think about because in the last 12 to 18 months, there have been places that have become desolate. Or even I know when I talk to people in, 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 in our church that when I have, have been having pastoral conversations and even in, in, in my old lives, you know, what, what happens to 10 is when you go through a traumatic situation is that you are being lured, you're being drawn in places where actually you don't want to go. And that's something that now, you know, we're getting out of isolation. We're, you know, we're, we're getting more freedom. Actually, we need to be very prepared to start and start spiritual, spiritual landscaping in a way that we know that we're setting our lives up for life and that the orientation of what we're building is not about us, but it's about Jesus. It's about the orientation of where we're going to grow our buildings towards to, that it is towards this single purpose. And that's that we serve Jesus, that in everything that we do, that we show him his lordship, that we show that he is Lord, that he is our God. And through that connection with him, that we're actually enabling ourselves that because of that, because of that orientation, then there is a highway into our hearts, into our minds, into what we say, into the communities that we're part of, of the love of Christ, of the power of God, of that connection. And through that connection with God, that we create that sense of life. So it's important for us to, to be mindful uh, on that. And, you know, I think we can all recognize that um, in the last 12 to 18 months, especially in the moments of isolation, there have been moments of, of reflection. There have been moments where uh, you, yeah, you were literally more inward focused because there was no one to turn to. Your friends, you couldn't meet up. You know, when you do half an hour uh, video phone call, then, you know, then, you know, you don't have anything to catch up on because there was nothing that to do. So in that sense, um, it has been, uh, we need to, we need to reestablish some things. We need to reestablish uh, dynamics in our world so that we really orientate back on Christ, but also how can we get this life from Christ and bring it into the community? Because that's something that see if reflects shortage in Bellum. That's, that's going to be your, well, I would, it's, it's a commercial saying, right? Unique selling point. It will be the draw card for people to really come to your church because church is not just a Sunday. And I've been talking to you, to Pastor Sets, and, you know, we were talking about this in the church experiences much more holistic than just a single moment during the week it's through the connection and through the vibe of the community and if we want to create a community of life if we want to create a, that sense of momentum in building community then we need to be connected with Christ we need to be orientated towards Christ so that through the highway of Christ we can share the love that we receive from that but yes, so the spiritual landscaping. Me, myself, I've been focused a lot on my inner world. I've been having conversations in the beginning of 2020 uh, and halfway through the year with a therapist to understand where do the pressures of life come from? Why do I, why am, do I carry these tensions within me? What's the, what's the cause of that? And I'm really glad to say that these types of reflections, these type of, this, this type of reflecting is quite confrontational, but at the same time really helpful because I find that I've been able to reshape myself. I've been able to let the life of Christ in and I've been able in that sense to empower myself through these types of conversations to really bring more life to the people around me instead of bringing them tension. But that's something that, that worked out for me. Perhaps there are, other, there are other people in your world, people from church 
that you need to be reconnecting into. Because actually what God has meant for us to be is a body of believers. Meaning that you are one of the members and one of the members of the body means that you that you receive power from another member from, from, from the body. But at the same time, it's your calling to bring that life as a member of the body to empower somebody else. And only not that, but only to also to reach the lost. To speak to your friends and colleagues and family members who don't share this hope with us. Because this is part of the new. God wants to draw in new people. He wants to, he has an, an, an ever increasing kingdom. And the kingdom of God is being built for you and me. And that's, you know, where the two locations that you currently have will be such a light for so many people. I'm really excited when, I, I cannot wait to be with you guys. But okay, if we look at the, the spiritual landscaping. Think about um, uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, where it says, do not ne ne neglect the coming together as a body. And why do you need that? Because it's actually a safety net. You know, when uh, if I look at the people in church as a pastor who've been thriving through the season of isolation, it, it, these are the people that have been in connection with people from church who, you know, have been online, who've been proactive in calling people, who realize that their life cannot be lived on themselves, but need to be lived with other people. And there are different gradations on, you know, how you can live life with others. And I want to challenge you, Pastor Seth and Emma, they're doing a great job. And I want to invite you to walk with them, be in a proximity with them where they can disciple you, where they can, you know, create and tap into a level of the calling that you have in your world that, you know, taps into a source of life within you. You know, the wonderful thing about me being a pastor, and I, I would like to think that Pastor Sets and Emma would experience the same, is that when you are overseeing people, you experience the love of and the vision for people's lives that we're leading so what I found is that you know I see things and when I and when we make effort as leaders to really tap into the heart of what God has for 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 the people then you know it it, it drills up a new uh, a new source of life a new source of enthusiasm and I believe that that's something that that that's that you know you need, we need to be preparing in our hearts that that's something that God has for us. And that means that we need to walk with our leaders. We need to, uh, you know, we need to uh, be this, have a, have an attitude, a heart's attitude of discipleship and obviously friendship and healthy connection there. So in a sense of isolation, you know, to get back at it, that's something that is hard, but we need to find each other in that because in the connection, there is life, the life of God and the life that we, that we give to each other. Um, yeah, what I, what, what, what I saw in, in, in my inner city was that, uh, some parts of the city that God had meant for me to flourish back into is something that I, I need to inhabit again. I need to make active. Now that I can be with people again, I'm, as a pastor, I'm trying to, you know, trying to be really active with them. And, uh, uh I also uh, lead a group. Uh, just people from our, uh, not just, but people from our church, uh, fantastic people, and we come together and we build a relationship. And that's what people need. People need, need, need to be building in a relationship. Think about what's valuable for you. I realized that in this last uh, se season, some things will be highlighted and uh, uh, put value on the things that you see that have value. And what do I mean with that? It's quite vague in a sense or quite generic. I, I realize that. But I know that God has spoken to you about, you know, what is really important in your world. For me, also this time of reflecting uh, uh, um, has also brought that the way and how, how I was busy with my work, the, the way I was uh, really consumed with work made that I went over boundaries that actually were not were actually too sacred for me. And what I found now is that I need to put more value on the things that are valuable to me. So in that sense, the setting of boundaries and the keeping to the boundaries is something that I've adopted in my life. And I'm, you know, I'm training myself to, to keep at it and to keep valuable the things that are valuable. Because if I'm really honest, work is fantastic and you can get a whole lot of uh, satisfaction from it. But as a husband, as a father of two kids, two teenagers, 
I also realized that setting a boundary for my family is one of the most important things that, that I can do. So I want to, uh, I want to make you excited. Don't go into the pre-COVID pattern of, you know, just working 70 hours, but go and, and, and value the things that are valuable to you. All the, and, you know, I must say, I love working. I, I, I like it. I, I like being produ productive. Uh, and I know you do as well, but it's good to, you know, set the value on what's value, valuable. The last thing, the last point that I want to make is that uh, is in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are, and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved through faith. In the season and perhaps also in the steps that you're trying to uh, um, uh, visualize for yourself on, you know, now the season is over. Now we're getting back at it. Uh, I can remember one of the first messages that our pastor Steve Warren preached. He was, have your mind in quarantine. You know, there is this sense that has built up over the 12, 18 months, and perhaps it hasn't dissipated to the full 100% of fear, of uh, anxiety, of um, 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 insecurity. And what I believe right now is that one clear word for us all is that we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but we are, are those who have faith and are saved. We have all the reason to be full of boldness. We have all the reason to really say, well, you know what? This season has been a season where some things have been very difficult, but now I need to rechange. I need to revitalize the, the landscape of my mind and my heart with this sense and this attitude of faith. Because pa Pastor Phil Pringle, the founder of the C3 movement, he states it in such a profound way. He says, the power of God moves through the atmosphere of faith. And when we create that sense of faith and that sense of expectation and that sense of, you know, when God is for me, who shall be against me? We are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. You know, uh, uh, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And, you know, all these wonderful promises, you know, begin to speak them out, begin to proclaim them over yourself, begin to state that the culture of, you know, where are you doing in your spiritual landscaping in, is in an environment of faith, is an environment of, you know what, this is going to be amazing. One of the prayers that I pray in a daily, in a daily day, that I say to God, I, I, I thank God, you know, this is the day of blessing. One of the Psalms, it, it, it says the following, it says, let the, more, let the Lord be magnified who taketh pleasure in the prosperity of a servant. God wants you to have a life that is fulfilled with all of his goodness. God, he literally says in John 10, 10, 10, he says that God came to bring life, life in abundance. And in, in 1 John 1 verse 3, it says that, that, uh, that he would pray that it would go well with our soul, even as our souls prosper. God wants you to be set in a place where you feel that the nearness of Christ is fueling your passion and not intimidate and that you're not intimidated anymore by the things that are holding you back. God has given some of you such a fantastic vision. And you know, the, the fears, the thoughts, the anxieties, the trying to creep in, making your vision smaller. But I'm telling you this, people, is that we are not those who shrink back to perdition. No, we are those who believe that we're saved through faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I realize that this message has, could have made a whole lot of sense for you. But perhaps if you say today, well, Peter, I don't know Jesus. I know that he's there. I have read, have read the Bible, but actually I don't know him to the level that I can honestly say that I have a living relationship with Christ then I would like to pray for you in a moment because every, uh, in, in every service, uh, uh, we would like to give you an opportunity to really uh, make a connection with Christ. And we do it in a very simple way. We, we do it through praying. But if that's, if, if that's not you, but you say, well, you know what, Peter, I, 
have been in contact with Christ, but actually I've come back to church recently and I want to recommit my heart to Jesus again, then I also would like to pray this prayer with you. And perhaps you've prayed it before, but I believe that in this decision that you're making today, that God, He will set up a new change in the culture of your life. I believe as we pray this prayer together, that the life of Christ will be flowing through you again. Or maybe you're saying, well, Peter, I, I don't know if I'm saved then I want to confirm, to use this moment to confirm in your life by a statement of faith that it says in the Bible that through the confessing of our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you have salvation. And that's what I want to do today. So if that's you, then I would like to pray this prayer before you and I would like to ask you to repeat it after me. Because as we are praying this prayer, we're dedicating, we're rededicating our lives to Christ so that we know that we're saved, that we invite Christ, the Holy Spirit, to come into our world with a sense of grace and freedom. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So I will pray a line. And if you can repeat it after me, that would be amazing. If you're already saved and you say, well, Peter, this is maybe not for me. I would like to encourage you to pray it even still because it's encouraging the people who are sitting together with you who've just made a decision to follow Christ. The prayer goes like this. Dear God, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you that he died for me. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to wash me clean. Holy Spirit, come and enter into my world. I give my life to you. Thank you, Jesus, for new life. And thank you that today I can be saved. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Fantastic. Let's give a round of applause for all the people who just prayed a prayer. I'm believing that this is one of the most significant decisions that you could have been making today. God bless you, Pastor Sets and Emma, you're amazing. And Pastor Sets, I agree with Pastor Phil, you're an absolute movie star. But you know what? I'm going to visit you hopefully anytime soon. Really love you guys in Seat We Reflect, Shoreditch in Belham. You guys have a fantastic future ahead of you. Jesus is with you.